There is no doubt that weddings are generally joyful occasions, but it can also be stressful due to the amount of planning and expectations involved. In Matthew 22, 1 to 10, Jesus provides yet another story, this time about a wedding feast. The host, having invited his guests, now sends his servants to inform them that the feast of steaming dishes is on the table. One by one, the guests snubs the host by ignoring the summons, making excuses, and even going so far as to mistreat his servants. Matthew's story is paralleled in Luke 14, 16 to 23. But in Matthew, the host is a king and the wedding banquet becomes a royal affair. Thus, the impact of the guest's rejection is not just a personal insult, but a diplomatic matter as well, which could in those days have far-reaching effects. It is little wonder that the king in Matthew's account become enraged and punishes those original guests. With the embarrassment of no guests, guests are brought in from the streets, both bad and good. Luke details it to include the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame, who constituted unlikely guests for such a banquet as this. But Matthew tacks another short parable onto this story. It is about a guest who is without the appropriate wedding garment. This second parable is not much different from the first, in that it was the custom of the host to provide wedding garments for those who could not afford it. It is not unusual, even in our culture today, for a bride or groom to provide the dresses and tuxedos for their bridal party. Thus, the fact that the guest did not have on the wedding garment could be interpreted as yet another insult towards the host. But if we apply this short parable to ourselves and see the host as God and we as the guest, Jesus is pointing out to us that accepting the invitation to attend is not enough. It is possible that Matthew's wedding garment symbolizes the ongoing nature of living out our faith, not just in accepting the invitation to come and sit at the banqueting table, but it is also about dressing or wearing the garments of our faith, such as charity, thankfulness, love, graciousness, honesty, faith, and so many others. Matthew, in adding on this parable, probably knew how easily grace can melt into permissiveness. And Matthew was perhaps addressing a church that had lost the distinction between accepting all persons and condoning all manner of behavior. 
Yes, God wants to offer us something, but it is also about our life being in tune with God's invitation. Each Sunday, we are privileged to sit at table with the Lord. As our prayer book puts it, God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. When we were baptized, we were officially called to be members of God's kingdom. What excuses do we give for how we live? And how does this invitation to be a part of the kingdom movement impacts our lives? Christ's call to follow him is not an invitation to be treated lightly, not a matter to say yes today and be ignored tomorrow. Galatians 3.26 says, So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God, through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. What does it mean to be clothed with Christ? Have we prepared prayerfully by examining ourselves and coming into God's presence with joyful gratitude as we sit at table with Christ. The hymn 625 in our hymnal, we come as guests invited when Jesus bids us dine. In the second verse, it goes on to say, we eat and drink receiving from Christ the grace we need. And in our hearts believing, on him by faith we feed, with wonder and thanksgiving, for love that knows no end, we find in Jesus living our ever-present friend. I do not want to linger on the inappropriate clad guest, but to look to the remaining guests who came. They did not expect to be among those numbered at this great feast. They came humbly and with a generous heart and a thankful spirit. What they received is more than just a meal. I believe they received a true friend who would stand for and with them and give them a new life.
Let us pray. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. And now we pray the collect for the day. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.